it was it previously felt like a map where it was fairly even, but now it's heading towards a CT sided map. And in the previous two weeks, we have seen many CT sides just beasting, getting like 11 rounds there. So interesting how the uh, map selection has changed. Uh, Cash is definitely a welcome addition to the general um, rotation of maps in competitive play. And we are in a pistol round with Cloud9 on the CT side, two armors. Oh, um, actually. Just to interrupt you quickly, first we should note that uh, we do have Lucky standing in for Sidoff, as I've been informed. So on team mobility. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, looks like uh, oh, a push on B apps actually here from Cloud9. So they're quickly going to work out what's going on here. Yeah, that's going to be lots of valuable information. We may have a quick peek into mid here, but the uh, incoming smokes will tell all the story they need to know. That is going to be a nice meaty grenade. That doesn't connect with anything here. That's the uh, mobility push the site. First frag goes to Cloud9 though. Ooh, and nothing in a great position, but look at that. They want nothing bad. They're going to get him straight away with a headshot. And Sean Gares as well going to fall. So it's so far, so good for team ability. They have to sight, but really fast rotation here from Cloud9. And uh, that bomb is ticking away. Pico working on those Netco guy players. And it looks like Cloud9 is going for the cleanup, and they are quite successful. So really nice stuff there from Cloud9. And. Uh, Actually, one thing to note, as I'm sure the American team will be very familiar with Netco guys, is we we at Basic recently partnered up with Netco guys. Um, so, if you want a membership, I'm sure you guys probably know a, mo a lot more about them in America than in Europe, generally speaking. If you want to get a 50% off a membership, then the the code is actually Face It in all caps. It's pretty pretty hot stuff, and uh, we'll talk about it a bit more after the match, as we are in here with some scouts. Okay, you can see Cloud9 have upgraded their armor with the helmets as well, so they don't get one shot on this anti-eco round. Davey does take it in the face, uh, and his teammates will be around the A-bomb site. We've got Stan just um, checking for the flank, but now they will go and proceed towards the A-bomb site and see if they can get the bomb down here. Yeah, so we, I guess, you know, the standard uh, Glock, just, just taking the same with the Glocks, because they got the bomb round down on the first round, which will allow them to buy up now after just one mere eco, and here is the buy. So now... Everything is going to be quite interesting to see if Cloud9 will... Well, I, sh I should think that they will definitely stick with the scout setup. And they're going to be going up against uh, mostly AKs here from Mobility. So this is definitely a great chance for Mobility. But also, if Cloud9 are able to win this, th their economy is going to be looking really fantastic. Uh, as they didn't really invest much into this round. So we get a quick push here on the Palace from Shroud. And again, they quickly work out that uh, likely mid and the apps underpass are probably going to be experiencing some traffic here for the terrorist side. You can see the flank here in T spawn from Shroud, who I'm not sure if he was able to take the shot there, but he will have some information as to where the bomb is going as uh, Semphis does get to work in mid and takes that slip. Some good tags here, lots of damage and a couple frags uh, going the way of Cloud9 already. Finally, Semphis does go down, but Hiko is still holding this short mid position. Nothing also in connector with that scout. So a very, very tough situation here now for Mobility as they do try to work their way onto some form of an option. And <laughs> look at this, Sean Gares forced to the close range defense, but the CZ, too good. Davey gonna go down and now Lucky is alone against the four men of Cloud9. And there is round number three and they pick up the AKs. They're not even gonna have to really spend any money here, just sent this. And this is actually from an economic standpoint, just absolutely mind-blowingly good here for Cloud9. As we were mentioning just before this match started about uh, the European Mirage and how you see the passive play from the T's um, at mid, we did see that last round, and we're actually not so much seeing it now. There's an eco rush towards the B bomb site through mid. Sean Garaz does take one down, does get a second frag, 7 HP. He will probably retreat to a safe haven. And the bomb is down for the T, so I don't think it's going to be planted unless Lucky goes nuclear with that P250. Man, you know Hiko really reminds me of Freiburg in many ways, of NIP. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. He feels like the Freiburg of Cloud9. And honestly, you know, in his own way at the same time, but he's so clutch, his execution is amazing, and his team is very comfortable with putting him in positions of high pressure where he has to deliver kills. And this is like a... You know, the, the Freiburg thing is like, you know, playing B on Inferno. This Hiko, they often leave him B alone, and this is a very real possibility for him to play that effectively. So that's, that's really a lovely thing to see in action. 
double AWP set up here for Cloud9. Sean Garez and Semphis going to be the brothers in arms here with the scopes. We've got a one in connector at the moment as Shah does get one in Palace. Davey will wait for the next round. And we have um, Semphis in CPL and Sean Garez in connector. So it looks like a double AWP in mid set up at the moment. And we do have a lot of traffic that could potentially go through connector and perhaps a boost up into CPR. In fact, there it is, and Semph is very close to this, and he's going to spot it very ready for that, in fact, with that CZ already out, predicting the, the boost there. And it's like a very good Reese coming in here, and even having the, uh, the goal to just jump straight through the window to go for the frag as he realized that there was a player near underpass here. And, and he's also going to get the information there as well by sacking himself. And it looks like Cloud9 holding on pretty strong to these positions so far. Mobility trying to work their way in, using a pick, using something to gain a yard here or there. And they are slowly making their way up connector here. But they're both there together. And Cloud9 are slowly going to be sandwiching them as they come out onto the stairs area. Only one pick to be made by Zek before finally Mobility are closed out there. 5-0 to Cloud9 at the moment. And uh, we probably see... A buy here from Mobility, unless they do choose to eco. No, the buy is coming out indeed. So we're going to have one Galil and four AKs. Again, the, w, the double AWP setup does continue here for Cloud9. Mobility putting one person towards the A bomb site at the moment and uh, three in B apps. One presumably will go towards the underpass. Oh, slip. Unable to make the pick there. Going for the risky play. I, I admire it, but he wasn't able to make that one happen. That would have been, and that play would have allowed the players in, in B to actually come out on the distraction that he would have caused. And that would have been the perfect storm there for mobility. But now they've got to go to plan B. How do they get into that B bomb site? That's really the question for them. Do you have Hiko there? It looks like we're going to see an eventual uh, smoke potentially flash and bum rush here from the terrorists. They need to do it fast, however, before the CTs push too far and realize that they're not going to go towards the A-bomb site. But they do seem to expect it. They've got four people on A at the moment, but here comes the rotation as the T's come in. Hiko's detected the push, and uh, we'll see if the T's can get the bomb down. Hiko ready and waiting. Here is number one, Zek going down. Hiko with the double. There is one more player to be found. Only two points of health, though, and he won't survive. And now Stan in a two on a one on two situation. So this uh, with the bomb down in 30 seconds, if you can find the one on one, then this could go very well. But Cloud9, a very experienced team here, going to be working a team play setup to constantly be baiting him on the left, on the right, until eventually he just goes down. And there goes the orb for Sean Gare. going to take him out immediately. No play at all there. And six to zero. Mobility with a, a close round, but uh, no dice at the end there. Let's see if they go for the double AWP again. Semphis is indeed actually going to go for the M4 instead. So they're going to change the setup a little bit. They did have the money. Swan Garris had uh, around 10,000 in the bank, but they will go for the single AWP this time, which is always important for the CTs to be unpredictable. And it looks like we're going to have a full commit to the B bomb site, sorry, A bomb site here. But Shroud does take down Slip early on, and this is going to be difficult. He's going to push the smoke and see absolutely nothing before. Nothing rips Lucky's head off, <laughs> and it is a two versus five now. So uh, I think we're going to see mobility back on the eco soon. Yeah, definitely. And here goes nothing to try to pick up the last few kills. And not going to make the one onto Zek, but he has plenty of teammates to clean it up. One, that one up for him. And yeah, you know, Cloud9, they are so far away from an eco themselves. Their bank being so huge right now. Mobility, you're in, in a lot of trouble. They have, you know, the, the saving grace, perhaps, that they do have that maximum $3,400 uh, round loss, consecutive round loss money bonus. That That is somewhat of a, something that's kind of okay. But at the same time, they will, it's going to be almost impossible for them to find themselves in a situation where they force Cloud9 onto an eco, unless they're dealing significant economic damage every round. So we'll have to see if they're able to do that. As uh, So far, there are no players going down for Cloud9 just yet. And Mobility trying to use those pp 50s to work some action here on A for the A split, but nothing quite quite going their way just yet against the rifles of Cloud9. Nice positioning there from Senfis on connector. Rather than uh, facing the corner of top mid, he's facing slightly inwards to kind of give the T's an... Uh, the idea that there's nobody actually there since no one was facing the corner. So they run past and he gets uh, an easy kill on the first guy and takes up the second guy who is on the eco as well. You see an aggressive push here on the A-bomb site, but there's no quick frag with the AWP. Davey, however, nice. does take out nothing in apps, and uh, this could be the first round here for mobility. 
Yeah, really good punish there. And this is something they can build off of. We see a lot of teams, they like to play passively after an early round pick like that to kind of make the, the CTs, you know, rotate and go two to two either site. And then, then they can find this really nice engagement. It's really nice avenue of attack. But we can see Cloud9 right now, they're sticking very close to mid here with a good setup. And this is uh, potentially the, the kind of best situation for Cloud9 to find themselves some, some frags is uh, playing with this mid. And actually, we're seeing a couple of kills coming in from Sean Gares there, able to pick off two players as they do you know, enter mid. And it looked like Mobility really wanted that A split, but the bomb is down now over at the, the top of mid. This is going to be very hard to recover from this position now. Cloud9 all over this. We do have players all over the place, actually, for Mobility. So maybe we'll be able to find a pick here or there. Another good one from Davey. That's two right now from him in this round. And we get a great pick off there from Slip as well. So getting those one-on-one -on -one, uh, Angels won our mobility right now to put them in a three-on-one -on -one situation. Hiko, uh, he is Hiko. I wonder so. if he knew where the bomb was there or if he's just choosing not to face through Connector because it, they had, it, despite him being the only person there, the bomb was top mid, but mobility have managed to retrieve it and Hiko will have to go for the retake here on his own against three. So here he goes in from jungle. They smoke off Connector. Hiko is ready, checking every single angle and spot for any mobility players. We've seen him successful in these situations before. I'm not sure if he quite saw the player on the left there, over towards slope. With three players left, he's going to eliminate all the positions. He's seen the first one. All they have to do is delay enough time here to make it impossible. Hiko, first headshot on slip. That's all he's going to find, though. And very well played by mobility to actually bring that one back. And it looks like we're having a, a round here for Mobility. And again, it's hard for them to find the eco on Cloud9, but at least they're pulling in some rounds, some good individual performances. Yeah, that's their first round on the board. And they're going to need to win every round that remains to make it 8-7. But again, Cloud9 back with a double AWP setup. And it is going to take a little while to force them onto an eco. However, buying two AWPs will make it that little bit faster if Mobility do get the rounds, and that's the first frag there for Zek on Sean Garres to uh, give them an in initial advantage here in round 10. Yeah, certainly now they have to decide, okay, how are we going to play with this pick now? We've gotten rid of a guy from Connector, so we can logically assume that there's there's two on A still. There's We know that Hiko plays B, so that they, they know more or less how Cloud9 should be set up, but Cloud9, they're not afraid. They go in for the frags, just peeking in for those angels. They are more than happy to take them, and they are winning them this round. Slip now, alone against the Cloud9 lineup. Able to take down Shroud, but look at this. Pretty much everybody's looking at Palace right now. So Slip is going to find it very hard-pressed to get out of there. You can see he does get himself down onto the bomb site, looking for more frags here. Doesn't get it, but yeah, it was, it was a nice opening. Really good pick from Zek, but... Cloud9, they seem so, they, they're so eager to go for the repeats. They don't care. They don't care. Triple AWP now for Cloud9, man. We're seeing quadruple scouts, triple AWPs. This is madness. Um, I noticed that Mobility, they, the bomb carrier has been caught in mid a number of times in this round, which is going to make it really difficult for them to, um, you know, get anywhere afterwards. And we are going to see a Glock train into the B bomb site here. And they're all just burning in the flames <laughs> and uh, blind, on fire, choking in the smoke. And Hiko's going to finish them off with the help of Stemphus. And uh, yeah, just the, the kamikaze run. Just get the eco over with. And Mobility are able to buy once more. So the triple AWP continues. I wonder where the third one's going to be. Nothing with the AWP now. We'll see. It looks like he's heading towards the A bomb site. So are we going to have two mid? And. Uh, 1A, although the second one, if one's being played in Connector, then that's basically A and mid. So we'll see where they head. We've got uh, Semphis getting the first pick on Lucky here. Nothing getting the second one on Zek, and Mobility have to wonder what the hell's going on here with these orbs. Yeah, it's all <laughs> just orbs for days right now, and Mobility can't quite seem to find a way in. And the, the many orbs it makes the picking style so hard, so hard for the, the T's especially considering some of the timings uh, can be quite superior for Cloud9 um, on the CT side into mid. Uh, you know, getting some good angles from connector and from short and from CPL all at the same time is a bit overwhelming. But we'll have to see if Mobility are able to like deal with this in the following round. Slip going to get himself one frag, but uh, and stands uh, the last man standing here against the four. Uh, <laughs> Slip calling out the owned. And the <laughs> Synthus knows that he got, he got his ass handed to him. He accepts it. But either way, 
this is a, this is something you know for the strategic players of mobility to say. Okay, right. We've seen this right now on Cloud9. We know they're running like a many orp setup. The many the many orps setup. <laughs> and the many uh, orps setup. The many orps. Wow. And uh, <laughs> many. Would orps you believe much English is his first language? In, indeed, indeed. Either way, you have your you know strategic players saying, okay, this is the setup they're running with, and th this setup has has inherent strengths, weaknesses, and as we see Stan going into the B bomb site, and he could just uh, you know playing with him, and let's see if he's uh, he's just baiting him massively here. He knows. He knows he can just keep peeking in and out, and Stan just has to keep going for the fake because as soon as he holds it down, Tico's oh. going to come out and gun him down just like that. Impossible situation for Stan. That but, awkward uh, moment yeah. when you fake the bomb and then you have to reload your rifle. <laughs> 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 you get shot in the chest. Oh, that's no good. Um, his team could have done with the money as well. So yeah. it, uh, Although, you know, it doesn't mean he made the wrong decision. It's just unfortunate that he did manage to plant the bomb. They wouldn't have been able to buy either way, so it's all right. Th they would only be on 3K. So. Oh, just in the middle of nowhere, Slip just gets caught with his pants down, as we say in the UK. And Zek will go forward with the Glock, but doesn't manage to beat the CZ. And actually getting a, cu a couple of kills in here, which is pretty nice. But yeah, I mean, it's a really cool uh, question to ask. Is um, like if for th for those for those uh, players out there and, and people who like really appreciate. Um, like breaking down the game and stuff, is when you have like a setup, whether it's like one AWP even, or even no AWPs, if it's just five rifles, or three AWPs in this case, or, or a triple SCAR. We've seen that before in the American, in the American, the last week's American Cup here. And uh, you ask yourself, like, what is the strengths and weaknesses of this setup? Like, what's really good, what, what is it really good at, and what's it really bad at? And this like helps you to start like thinking about how to play against it in a very basic way. But um, definitely every single setup has its strengths and weaknesses and potentials. So, it's uh, always very interesting to, to go theory craft mode on that. Yeah, some of the tidbits of this one would be just uh, abusing the ranges of this game. Obviously, the T's having to force their way into the A-bomb site, or down mid, or through B-tunnels. All abusable ranges with AWPs, and that's why we see three of them here for Cloud9. Working a treat for them at the moment as Semphis takes that stand, nothing takes that slip. Zek does get some semblance of revenge. And uh, they've got two frags down now, but the bomb, again, is in no man's land at the moment, but that frag will change everything. And uh, Zek will go to pick up the bomb, or not. It's a 1v1 now, so who knows what his decision-making will be. Going for the frag, it seems. Zek has been on point with the orping here for his team mobility, as he has Sean Gares waiting anxiously behind the box towards CT spawn to gun him down. 30 seconds do remain to be played with here for Zek. And he is going to keep going the angle. He's, I think he still thinks that he's behind the box here, behind the toll booth, and he's not. And this, oh, Sean Gares, Betty on the other corner there. And Zek will just grab him just in time with that AWP for the round as they get two on the board. And respect. We, see, we are seeing some picks, some good picks coming in here from Mobility. But I think, oh, we're getting the scar Ooh. here from Hiko. <laughs> so almost all snipers. Where does Hiko even take this? I want to see where he, where he goes with this. Well, he's usually the B-man, so... I oh, guess that makes sense. He goes to be uh, alone. And uh, so, what I mean, one thing again to expand on the, the previous thought is that ops are really, really good against the picking style that terrorists like to uh, choose sometimes. Because uh, you don't. A weakness of, orp, of the AWP is that you can get overwhelmed and that people can get close to you, and then suddenly the shots become very hard, and it's not as easy to deal with to just like no scope people. You know, it's just that's not like a comfortable, reliable situation. So, you know, picking against lots of orps can be very difficult. And so far we see Sean Gares, you know, going down here. And we have mobility down one player. But they do have Zek still alive. So there is hope. But wait, <laughs> Zek is down now. As I say that, they're trying to get up mid. But Cloud9 are being very responsible at putting in those bullets. And they always seem to find the torsos of mobility. You can see Shroud just, you know, going back towards connector here. Trying to lock it down. They know there's someone on underpass. In fact, Stan actually going to get the better of Zemphis from that underpass position. A slip. In the ladder room, looks cautiously both ways, and maybe Hiko to gun him down. Stan gonna make some return frags here, gets a double, but nothing on top of things over at CPL, and we get our first half played here, 13 to two for Cloud9. Perhaps a very expected result for many of the viewers and myself and you. That's a very, <laughs> that's a very strong half there from Cloud9, and. Uh, I don't know if mobility gave up towards the end there. I mean, they're just all kind of facing. You've got three AWPs on the map, 
and uh, there's there's not as much smoking as there could have been. I mean, we saw some in the mid area, but we'll come back to that because we are in the midst of the pistol round at the moment, and the first frag does go to uh, Neko guys. Yeah, and it's Neko a quick guys, take sorry. of this site here. For Cloud9, straight up on this B bomb site. We get the retake coming in from Mobility here from Kitchen. And nothing in a very good position up in the apps here. But it is a two on three, so Davy and Stan might just be able to find the headshots here. Davy, no! Davy goes down, and Cloud9 clean up and win the pistol round. And this could be a very fast end here for Mobility, having lost the pistol round, unless they're able to pull out something marvelous here. And. Uh, we are going to be seeing a pro, couple pro 90s. I think we're going to see a rush here. <laughs> I mean, you've got to get close yeah. to these P90s. Oh, yeah. Because the, obviously, they're, they're going to expect the force buy here from the CTs. And uh, decoy spread all over the map. Slip does, however, take out Shroud. And uh, we'll pick up an AK to go with Stan's scout. AK dropped there by Slip, though. And looks like we're getting a pretty close situation. The, the Pro 90 is not perhaps performing as they should just yet, but they're still alive and kicking as we have Davy and Lucky remaining. What can they do here at the end of this round? Lucky going to pick off the guy who just finished planting. He was so helpless, but Lucky did not care. We took him down anyway. No prisoners here for mobility as the frags do go back and forth. Hiko on nothing. Six points of health, going for the jump shot, and that Lucky barely unable to take him down. Burst too strong, and that's the match point now coming in for Cloud9. Well, this has been a, a pretty quick match, considering it started 20, 26 minutes late. So, yeah, I mean, it's, this is a, a romp for, for Cloud9, so just too strong. We've got the double scout set up on mobility side. So once again, no choice but to force by here. They have to go for the draw. There are, well for the tie. There are no uh, actual draws here in face it. So if it went to 15-15, it would be MR5 overtime. But that's not looking very likely at the moment as Cloudline storm towards uh, victory here. And uh, only three players left for mobility. Only two with armor and Stan with the just naked with the scout here. As Cloudline so hunt them down. So Lucky is able to actually find a kill on Tempest there, and uh, we go to a 2-on-2. Two -two. A severe disadvantage on the weapons there, unless they find themselves some of those dropped AKs around the map. And Hiko going to take down Lucky, and here we go. Stan. Stan the man. Here he goes, up short with, this, with the AK that he just found. Hiko's pretty low, but once again, Cloud9 in the 1-on-2. Very, very top team when it comes to that te those team play setups in these situations. And it's like they're going to peak at the same time, and they will win the round. And 16 to 2 is the score. So Cloud9 defeats Mobility in a crushing result on Mirage. And 